Welcome back to the Southern Passion Lounge. I am your host, Chef Amadeus. And I want to give a, a thanks to uh, Susan, the Bikini Chef, for stopping by. Uh, check her out at thebikinichef.com. My next guest, uh, she's a regular, and she comes on on a, on, a, on a monthly basis talking about what goes on in the media and, and behind the scenes and all that fun thing. Without further ado, let's welcome once again uh, my guest, Debbie. How you doing, Debbie? <laughs> Hi, Chef. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. So, Good. Um, so I I see that through social media that you just got back from France. Yeah, yeah. I just got back uh, from from five days. I went to the Cannes Film Festival to cover it for the um, show that I'm working on, Arise on Screen. It's a movie review show. So it was my first time going to that film festival. It was really pretty amazing. What were you? What was the most overwhelming thing for you? Um, overwhelming. Well, it, it happened very quickly. We flew Friday night. It's uh, seven hours to France. We got there Saturday afternoon, and we had to get a lay of the land and see the set and figure out our crew. And we started shooting the next day. So um, it was pretty much playing catch up. It was everything was moving very quickly. We got some great interviews though. Um, uh, Jimmy Jean Louis, who's an actor and model, he's uh, been in several movies. He's a Haitian actor, as a matter of fact, um, who's been in several movies, including Heroes and Fat Girl with Monique. Um, he, we interviewed him. We interviewed Ga- um, Gary uh, Gordan, Jordan, I think it is. He used to be with CSI. Um, uh, interviewed. Some, several filmmakers. Uh, so, you know, Cannes is about seeing, getting the first look premieres of movies and um, uh, filmmakers going there to get distribution deals and hopefully get distribution deals. And, and so it was, uh, it, it was pretty amazing. The weather was great. Um, your, the food was amazing. And I was just listening to your previous segment, and I totally, totally can relate to the challenge of being on the road and trying to eat properly. Um, I changed my eating, uh, my eating regimen at the beginning of the year, and I, you know, I juiced, and I'm eating healthy, not eating meat, just eating fish, staying away from dairy and gluten. And if you're in France, bread is everywhere. <laughs> they put bread everywhere, cheese, wine. So it was just really challenging, but I, I think I did okay. I, I may have cheated once, but <laughs> I had to taste the bread. But uh, pretty much, I, I tried. I stayed healthy. I ate primarily seafood and and um, and just stayed away from the bread. But it was challenging. It was challenging. Yeah, so I can relate to I it. I, I, I understand that. My goodness, um, as I'm traveling, I get to. I'm tasting. I'm judging competitions. I'm tasting all these foods and everything. That's why my my workout regimen has really uh, increased because I have a couple of events coming up that that's what I'll be doing a lot is mm-hmm. judging competitions and things like that. So, um, yeah, got to be, yeah, it's just crazy. I guess um, walking is the so, best type of exercise, too, when you're on when you're on the road. Try and walk as much as yes. possible. Yeah. Yes. I was and, just... and when, I, when I stay in hotels, I'm always uh, on the treadmill, mm-hmm. uh, walking and, and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, you got to get it in. Yeah, um, yeah. So let, let's talk about, you know, uh, for those who uh, are looking to do a television show or do a YouTube station and, and do like a, a uh, episode a week kind of thing, mm-hmm. do you have any, um, do you have any uh, experiences of doing a television show yourself that might, sh- might shed a, a, a light on to what people should expect in doing a show like that? Well, when you say do, are you talking about a, a weekly or developing a show for TV or YouTube or a show that's uh, actually already on the air and being a guest on the show? So which which is, uh, which where do actually, you want to start? Actually, I know, for, I know, let's start with developing. Okay. So developing a show is pretty much you start with an idea and you, um, most people have some form of an idea. And um, mm-hmm. you, the best thing to do is write it out. Write it out as far as how you see the show um, progressing from beginning, middle, and end. And um, 
just think about writing one episode, the first episode, and the premise, the mission, what the 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 um, premise of the show will be, and then the actual, if it's a half hour show, breaking up into segments, maybe three segments, and the storyline and the arch. If it's a, re, is it a reality show you're thinking of? A rea, if it's a reality. Um, rea- well, it's I know some I know people that ask about reality shows. So they 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 want to do their own show. Let's go with mm-hmm. a reality show. Okay, so if it's a reality show, think about the characters who will be involved in the show. Who are the characters? Give the characters names, outline their story, who are they as a character, what their background is, uh, because that's really important as far as um, coming up with a storyline. If it's a cooking show, think about, look at all the other cooking shows that are on. How is your show going to be different from the other shows that are on? Think about that. Is it a competition show? Is it an unscripted uh, show in which it's really revolving around the personal life of the characters? Say, for instance, Oprah has Sweetie Pies. I don't know if you've had a chance Mm -hmm. to see that show. But it's really about the characters themselves. The cooking is a part of the show, but you're really involved in the development of the characters in the show. So that's what Sweetie Pies is about. But if you're thinking of a competition show, say, for instance, Top Chef or um, the Food Network uh, competition show that you are a part of, that's a different type of of um, storyline. So you have to determine what kind of show you want it to be. And then once you've uh, figured that out, then you can start actually writing it down and scripting it. So if it's a competition show, you know that you're going to have to have challenges. Uh, you'll, you'll have um, a number of different people competing, chefs competing in the story. So you have to find those chefs. Uh, where do you want them to come from? What do you want their storylines to be, their background? Each one should have some different story for their background. So those are some of the things you think about when you're casting the reality show. So once you have the idea together and you've written it out, uh, it's best to get it copywritten. Uh, send it to the copyright office. You can write to the Library of Congress to, to get the right form to fill out so that you can um, register it, get it copywritten, and also register it with the Writers Guild of uh, of America. Um, that's that's one way to protect yourself in case someone does take or um, say that they have a similar idea. You can have you can show that it's copywritten. Now ideas are kind of tricky because you can have an idea, and if someone sees your idea and changes a couple of things in the story in the show, it's not your idea anymore. It's their idea. So it's really hard to actually protect an idea. So whoever you decide to um, do business with and partner up with, it really helps if it's someone who has a good reputation, someone you know, and who you feel that you um, will be safe in sharing your idea with. Okay. So when when you have this great idea, Mm -hmm. when you have this great idea, you had everything copyrighted, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the next step they should get to? Uh, and once they start shooting everything, is there anything that someone can do to make sure that they're, let's say, they're the host, and how they they make sure that they get their name in the credits for that? Well, that's the the credits and what your credit's going to be and what your role is going to be on the show are, are, are details that need to be worked out before you even start shooting. So that's in the negotiating, negotiation okay. of the, the, the deal. So if, say, for instance, you have an idea and you partner up with a production company, because that's really a way to get a show on TV. You, you're best to align yourself with a production company that has a history, that people have already worked with and that have a track record and um it it, it's uh they they they're already respected they're they the the group is already or the team production team is already well known so it'll help it will help make the production process a lot easier for you as a new person so you have to establish 
early on what you want as far as your role in the show. Do you want an executive producer credit? Are you willing to sign the idea off and just take the credit and whatever monies they're going to pay you for the idea? Or do you want to be involved on a day-to-day basis and uh, be, have a main role in the show? Those are all things that you're a lawyer. So you should definitely have a lawyer who will help you. Um, uh, well, let me ask you this, what, uh-huh. What is an ex- what actually is an executive producer? What is, what is their role? Oh, an exec. Well, I'm an executive producer. It varies from show to show. So, an executive producer on a reality show uh, could be someone who could have the responsibility of um, being a part of the uh, process of find. Signing off on the storylines, um, having a say in the casting of the project, um, being involved in the day-to-day production of the show. And then a, an executive producer can also be someone who just wants to title and is not involved in the production at all. If you, want, if you created the project and you're happy with the creator title, you can just get that title and not be involved in the production. So you really have to determine what role you want to play in the show and what title you like, and that's part of, that's negotiated early on. Um, but the production company, many times that you align yourself with, with, will have people in their stable who are actually executive producers who have actually run shows. They've been showrunners, so they know the day-to-day running of a reality show. As a new person coming in, you don't really know how a show works. So you do need someone who understands the day-to-day running of a show and how how the episodes need to be developed and what the um, time schedule is to get the shows done. You need to you need someone who knows that. So the production company will probably have people in house who um, who will be they'll put up to serve as executive producers on the shows. So if you're if you're the the host and the well the the um, what they call them. If you're the talent for the mm-hmm. for the um, the show, and mm-hmm. you're you're hosting and everything, what what's some of the things that that bump heads between the host and the the producer and things of that nature? What what's some of the things people can expect to bump heads with? Because they do bump heads. Well, you bump heads and wow, bumping heads is kind of common. I mean, as the host of the show. Um, do you have do you have a vested interest? Do you own a part of the show, or are you were you just hired to be the host? Because if you're hired to be the host, uh, yeah. Okay, I see. So if you're hired to be the host, you just do what the producer say. But if you well, have you a know, vested interest, I, I, I think if you're hired to be the host, your your um your chances of uh having a bigger say in how the show unfolds is 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 smaller. Especially if you're an unknown host, if you're a new host, um, if you're an established host with a track record, and you you've actually been the host for another show, and you have some TV experience, then you'll you'll have a little bit more say and power in um in in what the producers might want you to do because you might not feel that what they're asking you to do is something that you're comfortable with or it ties in with your brand. And, you know, so those are things, again, that need to be worked out early on so that you can prevent any problems while you're on the, um, on the set. But contracts are signed beforehand, so um, hopefully well, these things are worked out before. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about the brand. How do, you <laughs> main, how do you make sure that, that your brand, if you're just the paid host, how do you make sure that your brand is is your brand and, and not have them say, well, I think it need to be this. You want to do something like this that, that you feel will go against your brand. Well, again, you have to look carefully at the script before you sign on, the show, ask all the questions ahead of time so that there is no conflict with, with your brand. So um, it's up to you to do your due diligence and, um, ask all the right questions beforehand and make it clear that you are you will not participate in something in case they want to change 
something along the way, that you're you're not going to participate in something that involves X, Y, and Z. So you you really do. That's again where an attorney comes in, and um, you're and you are very clear about what your brand is, and you do not want it to be. So you um, you handle that ahead of time. So as a producer, mm-hmm. what's some of the the things that you've run into that would help someone else to avoid the pitfalls of? In developing a show? Well, I had one experience in developing a show very early on. Um, when I first left um, the world of daytime talk, I, I did have a business partner and Reality TV was very new, and we came up with this great idea, which we were going to create a reality show based around dieting. And we thought, wow, it would be great if you could get a group of people together, put them in a house, put them on a restricted diet, um, not a restricted diet, but a controlled diet with trainers and and um, and we called it Fat Chance. We thought it was a great idea. It was so, it felt so revolutionary. It was this was in 1998 or 99, and Survivor had just come on, and we were just brainstorming on ways that we could get on board with the reality sh- um, reality boat on the reality boat. And so we you know we wrote out a couple of episodes, and we partnered up with the production company, and the production company took it and started shopping it around, and they. We got a little nibble, and the the, the um, company that was interested in us wanted us to actually write out 13 full episodes of the show. And so we sat down and we cranked out 13 episodes, and then we didn't hear from them anymore. And we thought, wow, what happened? So when we checked with our friends who were with part of the production company, they said, oh, they're not interested. They, they said it, they didn't want to do it. Mm, I would say maybe six months later, NBC had a new show on, and it was called The Biggest Loser. And we looked at the show, wow. and we said, oh, my God, that's the show. They had tweaked some things, but it was the same concept. It was, it was your show, huh? <laughs> wow. And so, yeah. And so we talked to our lawyers, and, you know, the lawyer said, look, everybody has an idea. It's going to... You, you'll get tied up in court trying to, to fight this, and and you know, and we said, but this is the show, and it didn't it didn't matter, it didn't matter. We couldn't fight. We couldn't fight. So, so how do you protect yourself from that? Well, again, we had copywritten it. Uh, it, it would have been a fight. We, it would have been a fight. There was no way to really protect us. It was an idea, a concept. It. Um, like I said, their show had some different uh, takes, different things um, that, that were changed. But um, it was, I mean, I'm sure there are other people in the world who probably came up with a weight loss shit reality show. But it, the timing was so coincidental, and we just saw so many things that were our ideas. But you, we couldn't really protect ourselves. We couldn't. Mm. So... Um, what would I have done differently? Okay, I probably would have. We probably would have gotten an agent. And when you have an agent, which is very, it's not easy to get. But if you have an agent, the agent is pretty much vested in protecting you, the producer, and the production company. So you're working. The producer is the per, not the producer. The agent is the person who pretty much has you under his umbrella, and the chances of of things slipping by are um are not as great. So having an agent um probably would be something that now that I'm doing it I would have an agent to um to oversee oversee the the whole project. Okay. And the, okay. the next question is how do you get an agent? <laughs> so <laughs> getting an agent <laughs> Getting an agent is not as easy as it sounds. And, you know, agents, someone, uh, it's always great when someone can recommend an agent to you and put you in touch so you can have a meeting. Getting a, a meeting with an agent is pretty hard. Agents either come after you because you have something that they want. So if you decide that you want to create a YouTube channel just to get your show started and you get on the 
the agent's radar because your YouTube channel, your show on your YouTube channel is doing well, the agent might decide to reach out to you. That's one way. That's why I think YouTube channels are great because you really are in control and you're not relying on a network executive to say, yes, we want to see what you have to 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 say you're not relying on a TV station to say, yes, we'll green light your project. You're actually creating the project and putting it online. And whoever finds it, finds it. Whoever you push it out to in, in the social media um, world, they, there's a chance that they'll see it much faster than you're trying to get a, a meeting with an agent and then make a presentation, that putting out that sizzle reel that you and I talked about the last time I was on and having the mm-hmm. agent, uh, not the agent, the television executive say, yeah, I really like this. I want to do it. So with the YouTube channel, you're more in control of what you put together and who who you can reach with it. So I, I really think that's a great way to start. Issa Rae did that. Issa Rae her, had her web series, um, Awkward Black Girl, on a YouTube channel, and um, she started getting buzz. People started talking about it, and she just okay. would put these web, webisodes together, and she developed the following. And she's doing great now. HBO has picked her up to do something. She's had some other things in the works. So, um, yeah, I would say the YouTube channel is a good way to get started. Have you seen those YouTube commercials with the chef? There's a young chef. She has, I think, 5 million followers on YouTube. Her name is Rosanna Positano, I think it is. Young chef. But YouTube has started to play her... um, advertisements, commercials featuring her YouTube channel on television. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I think that with with everything that is out there now, actually, you know, people assume, and I appreciate this, I really do, people people call me up and they, they assume that I have every answer to everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And that's why I have I have people on like you because people ask me questions that I'm asking you. Mm-hmm. Um, um, same thing. Reason I have uh, Susan on and my other chef friends that I have on. What what kind of advice would you give somebody that that has you know that has a true desire to do their own show, mm-hmm. and but they don't have a they don't have a production company? What's the best okay. way for them to you know start start that? that webisode on uh, on YouTube? Well, start, create a, a YouTube channel. You know, start, create your own YouTube channel. Um, decide what kind of webisode you want to put together um, and start shooting. You really just have to do it. I, I, I mean, right now I think you should, you should Google, anyone listening should Google, uh, cooking webisodes, and just see what's out there already. See what's on these YouTube channels and what's put, being put out there. Think about how your presentation can be different. And even if it's a one-camera shoot where you're setting up the camera, you set up the camera and you're just in front of the camera and you're doing something, think about how your presentation can be different. And your episode or webisode doesn't have to be very long. It can be five minutes long. It can be ten minutes long. But don't get bogged down with making it perfect. Don't get bogged down with it having to be a certain length of time. It's really about the content. What is it about your content that makes it interesting and different from what's out there? Then once you've actually shot a couple of episodes, say you commit to shooting seven or eight episodes, Start pushing it out through social media. Start just thinking who you want to see this. Who do, who do you want to get? Uh, whose eyeballs do you want to get on this particular webisode? And then start following that person on Twitter and sending it to them. Send it out. Put it on so that it gets on that person's timeline, Twitter timeline. Um, if they want to link up with that person, send them a note on LinkedIn that you'd like them to take a look at your uh, your webisode and send them a, a, a note, a nicely written note with a couple of uh, episodes from your channel. And you never know. 
it might work out where they're, they're interested enough that they want to talk to you a little bit more. But you've got to be ready so that when they do call you or get in touch with you, you are prepared and you have your, your, uh, your presentation, your treatment, your TV treatment together. You know what you want. It's, uh, it's a chance that you shouldn't let uh, uh, fall by the wayside and, be un- and, and catch you unprepared. You need to be prepared so that if someone does respond to you, you're ready. So, so in other words, the dress for the part you want, not for the one you have. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and also follow the Hollywood Reporter. That's the industry uh, magazine, and they uh, do an annual list of the power players. Um, so look at their uh, annual list of power players, especially in the reality world, and you see a list of the production companies that are actually doing something in the reality world companies that have 10 or more shows on on the air like Ryan Seacrest has he's one of the top players um they have a list of the production companies and reach out to those production companies follow them on Twitter um reach out to them on LinkedIn and so those are the people you want to contact with your ideas and it's called Hollywood the yep. Hollywood reporter the Hollywood Pro- reporter okay. the Hollywood reporter is the name of the yeah and yeah, look at their okay. annual list of power players, reality power players. Hmm. That's, that's, uh, that's, good. that's why I bring you on the show, because you have that information. Um, well, I'm glad so, I can help. Um, well, yeah. So before I let you go, what's, uh, when people are putting their thoughts down, mm-hmm. I, you know, there's there's been a, through different industries has been like this. You and I having drinks and we come up with this idea, but you take it and run with it. What, how should we protect ourselves from that? I wish I could say that there, so you and I are having, we're friends and we're having drinks or we're just casual acquaintances? No, 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 we're, we're, we're friends just sitting down, you know, having drinks and, you know, we, we get, we get together for just our normal drink. But particular juncture, we're talking about, you know, what would be a good show. I wish we could do a TV, somebody could do a TV show like this, 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 and this, and this. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a month later, one pops up, and it's everything you guys talked about, but you don't get any, any props on it. So you mean the person you were talking to ran with the idea? Well, that's not yep. a friend. Well, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> that's not a friend, and you have to know who you're talking to. You you got to know who you're sharing these kind of ideas with. You really do. And you know, if it's a friend and someone you can trust, then share the ideas. But if it's someone you just met casually and you're shooting the breeze and sharing your great ideas, that's not so good. But there is no way to protect it. That's why you have to be really careful. Um, about how much you share with who you share it with, and um, um, yeah, yeah, and just really okay. knowing who the circle of people that you're moving in. Okay, okay. Well, as always, it's great having you stop by. And, oh, thanks um, for having me. And give and give us some great information like you have, continue uh-huh. to have, and um, it should be a, a lot of fun to. Um, to put these things into use, and I'm pretty sure I'd probably get some, some tweets about, hey, man, I appreciate the conversation you had with Debbie, the whole nine yards. So um, that's what I look for when I do things like this. Oh, good, good. So, um, I... Yeah. So like I say, um, thanks for stopping by, and uh, as always, uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, next month. And um, on another I wanted topic. to tell you, if anyone wanted to reach me, I'm at the, my oh, Twitter yeah. handle is at socialtvdeb. And um, my email address is um, socialtvdeb at gmail.com. And you can always check out my website at Deborah Mitchell Media Associates. And, uh, yeah, I, re- I post regularly, so there's always some information there for people. to. to and I, post our, I also post our radio conversations there, so people who haven't had a chance to hear us from the beginning can log on there and actually hear um, the conversation. That's awesome. That is awesome. 
<laughs> well, like I said, we'll we'll we'll, we'll chat uh, next month, and uh, once again, we look forward to having this uh, another great conversation with you about you know another topic about you know trying to get people into the into the media and and, and know their way around it. So uh, yeah, look forward to talking to you next month. Okay, so I'll talk to you later, Chef. All right, talk to you later. All right, bye bye. Bye bye.